Hello everyone, my name is Beagle and welcome to episode 40 of the Minecraft Let's Play World. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. And actually we are in Minecraft 1.16.4 now. If you can see here, if I press P, it shows up this, that social interactions are only available in multiplayer worlds. Um, I don't even know what this update really did other than that, to be honest. Probably just bug fixes and all that, because if it was something important, I would probably already know about that. But yeah, we are here at the plains where we used to farm our charged creepers. You can see it's a little blowed up there. And today we're actually gonna pay a tribute, almost. So, as some of you may know, EfoSlab, the, one of the biggest Minecraft YouTube channels out there, he is going to hit the 10 year mark on his Let's Play world and we're gonna build a little something something in our world to celebrate that. So I'm gonna show you a picture of a thing he built in his world which is the You've Been Efold portrait thingy in the background there. <laughs> I always liked that build from his world and we're gonna try to replicate his head from that. Uh, just so we kind of have a baseline of what we want to do. You see, what I want to actually do is I want to make his face, right? To celebrate, because I really enjoy his YouTube series and it's one of the many inspirations that I had to start my own. But I also want to give it some redstone functionality if possible. So we have a 8x8 base here, which is going to be for his head, of course. This is gonna go 7 blocks up, because that's how big a Minecraft head is. If we hit F5, we can count 8x8 eight eight on my face there. And then we're gonna add some details like hair, and we're also gonna make it 3D, because he has that mask over his head, which is going to be slightly hard to pull off because I don't know how many blocks uh, it is actually. You, you see, I don't actually... I am not actually using a reference picture. I am doing this fully from memory right now. So we'll see how close I can get here. Also, at the time of recording of this episode, uh, the new Optifine is still not out, so... If you see some more lag spikes than usual, that is most likely why. Alright, so there he is in all of its glory. I think I did a relatively decent job trying to get his head right. So there he is. We have Efo Slab here. Or Efo. It's Efo Slab is not actually his name, is it right? It's actually just his channel's name. So the next step now that I want to do is that I want to take this land and I kind of want to sandwich it around him. I want to sandwich him into the hill. So it, it look, kind of looks like he's engraved in there. I think that could be pretty cool. And then maybe we can have some custom trees going from the sides. And of course on the inside we will have some redstone machinery of sorts. While I'm placing dirt here to embed him into the hill here, I actually... Is there a witch inside? What? You guys hear that, right? Where is she? She's like right here. What? Oh, is... oh there we go, I see here. There we go. I got confused there for a second. Right, uh, what I wanted to talk about is that I lost my netherite shovel. I'm using this crappy one instead for now. This efficiency 2 shovel that I got from our villagers. So I guess we're gonna have to enchant up a new one because the old one is nowhere to be found. Which is quite a problem because I just realized that though we don't really have a proper XP farm on this world yet, believe it or not. <laughs> So we're gonna have to fix that like really soonish. We're gonna add a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns here so we can light up this place so we didn't a mob farm in the dark. 
like so. Maybe some vines like that, because why not? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I like how you can see the leaves on the sides there. Very cool. Well, I think that's enough building for now. Let's actually get to the meat of the stuff. We're gonna do some redstone. Nice. Finally got an Enderman again. The last two died, like, instantly. Hopefully this guy lasts a while. Let me just build him a quick roof here. Okay, so I came up with a little design of some sorts here. <laughs> this actually took me one hour to design and I'm not joking. I'm a slow redstone builder for sure, but I think it turned out pretty okay, so... If you're wondering what this is, this is Efo's diamond burner. The man is infamous for burning diamonds all the time and he has a contraption that turns his fire when he throws a diamond into it into a blue fire. Like so. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. I, I absolutely love this. I'm so proud of myself that I actually managed to pull this off. This is all me, by the way. I came up with basically all of this. And also it's on a timer, so we have a five minute clock here. So when that item despawns, it turns back into a orange fire. And then we can burn another diamond in it. And there we go. Uh, we don't actually lose the diamonds, by the way. They end up in here with all of the other junk. You can actually turn it on with any block but this is a diamond burner not a terracotta burner so we're not gonna do that <laughs> and also this for some reason fires two items when it's supposed to fire one i'm not sure what's happening there oh actually i i am sure what's happening there this redstone dust doesn't have to be there i don't think so okay let's do a test uh, still two ticks, but at least it works. Uh, so, to explain how this works, uh, it's really simple. We throw an item, it ends up in this hopper, compared to detects that. Then we have a repeater which connects to the dropper, I mean dispenser, which fires up the fire. The piston pushes the block so it is replaced with a soul soil block. So we have a blue fire because the blue fire spawns on that. And this other side basically just fires the clock, which then resets the whole system. It's quite simple, but it is kind of finicky with the observer detector up there and all of that. Because the f blue fire, I just couldn't make it spawn. And once I put this here, it works just fine. So yeah, now the hard part will be to move it into the hill there. That's where I actually want to have it. And another thing I, that I installed, actually, let's press this button. You probably heard some observe, uh, droppers clicking, not observers. So if we come here, you can see that I added a little redstone contraption here that I just need to fill up and then we can start using it. By the way, if you're wondering where the EFO head is, this is our base. And when we fly out this way... This is where the creeper fields are, and this is where the EFO is. So yeah, not that far away at all. Okay, I loaded up the system, let's try this. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. So that was a reference to his go get your snacks line. <laughs> because why not, right? Uh, I don't know what else we could do with this. I'm thinking about a few things, but I'm not really sure about any, because this is like the main thing, that is like a secondary thing. But there might be one more thing that we could pull off. Hmm. I'll think about it. For now, I'll just start moving this where it's supposed to be. Alright, the whole thing has been moved to its new location, and it's currently on, as you can see. And we don't have fire tick off on this world, so I need to be careful with these leaves because it's gonna burn the whole forest down. <laughs> so what I'm planning to do here... Oh, there we go, it just reset, so we can burn another 
diamond in it. Let's quickly do that. Uh, where do I put my diamonds? There we go. Let's see it working. Whoop. There we go. Uh, still fires two items, but whatever. I also accidentally made it smaller than it was before, which is pretty cool. So what I'm planning to add here is something like a fireplace with a chimney going up to the forest there. I think that could look pretty cool. And then we can terraform around it and add more rock into this side here. Because, I mean, the brown dirt isn't bad. But I think it's gonna look way nicer when we add some stone there. I also need to be careful not to accidentally break this contraption here. Now it's gonna be slightly finicky. But I think we can manage. Okay, well, there you have it. The diamond fireplace is in. Uh, let's quickly just test it out if it still works. Whoop. Whoop. The diamonds are burning too fast. Man, I can seem to get it to work right now. Oh no, I have to remove this block because I kind of need to throw it at the side there. Well, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess we're gonna have to fix that somehow relatively soon. I'm gonna keep it like that for now though. Oh man. <laughs> It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I added a bunch of plant life around the campfire and over the E4 head as well. Lots of berry bushes, hidden lightning, double tall grass, melons with sea pickles on top, looks like stems, sugarcane, and that coral as well, and lots of mossy cobblestone. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think this is as far as we're gonna get with this build. Today, I do want to burn another diamond here though, just for the sake of it. And I don't think it's possible to do that, however. Yeah, the diamond gets burned too quickly, we have to extinguish it and then throw it. Well, it kind of works, I guess. <laughs> and it is only November as of right now, but I wanted to build this in advance. So let's push this button here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is so funny to me, I really don't. So we're actually starting a brand new big project today, which is kind of exciting. We haven't started anything big in a while, and it's gonna resolve so many of our issues, I hope, <laughs> if we pull through and we actually finish it as soon as possible. Uh, I am trading with these villagers to get XP for my pickaxe and for my new shovel that I'm about to enchant though, so I'm gonna be here for a while it would seem. Who needs XP farms anyway when you got bottles of enchanting? <laughs> wow, those don't give anything. <laughs> Are those really that bad? Come on, you can do better. Yeah, that gave me like 50 durability. <laughs> Oh man, never mind, we do need an XP farm. Oh yeah, and I absolutely forgot to do this. I crafted these fireworks here. Let's see how they look. Oh man, that looks pretty cool. In celebration of EFO's 10 year anniversary. That was fun. So this new mega project is a farm and you might be wondering what type of farm it is. Well... It's an iron farm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I said I wouldn't do one. It's here in red that, I'm, that it's saying that I'm not gonna do one, but I am going to do one. And you might be wondering, Beagle, why the heck are you changing your mind so much? Well, this one is not iron golem powered. Aha, uh -huh. no iron golems needed for iron, it would seem, in this new update, 1.16. Our design is not even going to have villagers involved in any way. Uh, and we'll see how efficient it is when we build it. But first, we need to go into the nether. Whoa, that actually made me jump. 
Oh yeah, while I'm here, I might as well show you this. I've been working on this off-camera and this is most likely going to be a very off-camera project. But you can see that I extended this tunnel quite a bit. Still doesn't lead anywhere, but it definitely looks pretty cool. I like it, I added melons and saplings to the sides. I just love this tunnel so much. And I also replaced the stairs with slabs. So now when you break it, it gets there way more often. It gets picked up by the hopper way more often, that's what I'm trying to say. Man, I'm bad at English. So there is one block that we need a lot of in our farm, and that is magma blocks. We will need stacks upon stacks upon stacks of this stuff. So I guess I'll just get to mining here. And I'll try to collect enough for the whole thing. It's gonna be way more difficult to place it, though. Now that I'm thinking about it, doesn't Frostwalker prevent you from taking damage from this block? I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to do a bit of a test run later on today. Alright, this is the nether waste biome that we were in in our last episode, where we linked up our portal to the Dark Oak Forest. And I'm thinking we can start building around here. Now, we're not gonna build this just anywhere. We're gonna build this in a very specific location, which is on the nether roof, of course. That's the best place for iron farms. Everybody knows that. And we're gonna have to punch a hole through the bedrock ceiling to get there. So... We should be hitting bedrock around now, yep. And we need to find one that is as high as possible. That there is block. It should tell you somewhere on the left hand side there. I can't find this. Where is it? It's supposed to tell you what block you're looking at, right? Oh, there we go. Targeted block 126. Is that correct? I think it's supposed to be... One, two, seven, though. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know how we get to hit it, though. <laughs> uh, I guess we can find another one, then. There we go. One, two, seven. This one is way easier to connect up to. We're gonna grab some wood. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to get through the ceiling, in case you haven't done that before. It's relatively simple but I wouldn't have come up with it myself in a million years. I don't even know who I saw it from, on whose channel I saw it first. So we're gonna get some ladders here. Three is enough. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna screenshot this piece of bedrock because, yeah, we don't wanna get lost up there. Take our belongings. We should have enough stuff to make a new portal. And yes, we do. And I forgot a thing. There we go, Ender Pearls. Right, let's try to do this. And there we are. <laughs> on the bedrock ceiling for the first time on this world. It's empty. It's really empty. <laughs> Which is good for a iron farm that we're gonna build. Uh, now I gotta take a look at that screenshot. And then I can start punching out the bedrock so we can come here without the use of these things. Okay, I'm pretty sure that is the block we're supposed to break. Uh, let's get our redstone stuff then. We need a piston, a redstone block, a piece of obsidian. There we go. And then we need TNT, of course. What else would we use to break a bedrock block? And I think that's it. We need one more thing, actually. And that is a trapdoor. There we go. Okay, I think I got everything set up properly here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a piston facing down by placing a TNT here, right? This is gonna blow up this piston and then we're gonna place a piston facing down which will get powered and unpowered at the same time because this redstone block is going to blow up, which then is going to somehow delete bedrock. Whoever came up with this is 
most likely a genius because wow this is so just random right but we're gonna try this uh, hopefully we don't die and yeah we place the tnt here i'm pretty sure uh, that looks like it's gonna kill me, but I'm gonna trust it anyway. <laughs> I should look at how to do this properly. I actually did this properly before, but... Oh, here goes nothing. That is so dangerous. Okay. And unlucky. <laughs> uh, when the piston is facing downwards, it's actually not a good sign you need to see it facing upwards that means you most likely succeeded and i'm probably gonna be here for a while because this never works on the first time so let's try this and i was so unprepared <laughs> oh man this is gonna be a long afternoon hopefully you can still do this and i'm not just gonna spend like hours here doing absolutely Nothing. Trying to break bedrock when it's no longer possible. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> we actually did it. It literally took me almost a stack of TNT to do this. Probably because I was using a sticky piston the whole time. I didn't think it was a problem, but I think it... Might have been. Okay, let's mark this down so we don't lose this place using lanterns. And we're also gonna take this obsidian man. <laughs> this literally took over a hour and a half to break that piece of bedrock. Okay, we should be able to see this from a decent range. Yeah, that is pretty obvious. And now we're gonna build our iron farm here. <laughs> wow, this took so long. <laughs> so long. But we can actually start working on the thing now. First of all, we are going to build up as high as we possibly can. And if you look at the top left screen, you can see that there are only two entities rendering in right now. Which is good. Oh, I wanna use this other thing. This other block, there we go. And that is a good thing, because that means that there is nothing spawning down below us right now. One entity, how high are we? 200 blocks now. Okay, and zero entities here. And if it stays on zero, this means that this is a good AFKing spot. Uh, we are going to go a few blocks higher, just in case. And yeah, this is where we are going to build all of our stuff. Alright, so check it out, lots of progress has been made. We now have four small spawning platforms which are working. I was standing on this middle block here, this is where we're gonna stand for the piglins to spawn. And yeah, they are spawning. Now, if you one-shot them with a crit, they actually don't aggro onto you because they actually need to have the piglin live so he can tell them that you are aggressive if that makes any sense but yeah to explain what i did here these like intersections or these lines these stone lines are 24 blocks long uh one two three four five oh no <laughs> these need to have four block gaps it went it in between each other so I guess I need to fix this real quick but uh, to explain what I did here uh, basically these are just the first parts of our spawning platform this is what I would call a oh boy <laughs> a donut fair enough a donut design so we will have a giant loop around us right which will be connected this is going to be a circle 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 and it will also have probably more platforms at least three spawning platforms and this is a very specific amount of blocks because mobs can spawn 24 blocks away from you right but if they are 36 blocks away from you 
I think I got and yeah, that's not right. 32 blocks. Yeah, that's right. If they are 32 blocks away from you, they stop moving. That guy is in that range, I think, so he will never move. He will stay like that forever. He he's probably gonna spin, but he's not gonna move, right? And neither are those, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how far away we are. But that is a very crucial information. You see, these platforms will be eight blocks long, right? So it will be an eight block loop. And that is the reason. Because if we would have more blocks away from that, they wouldn't be able to move. They wouldn't just be updated, right? They will spawn in, they just won't get updated. So in this range, on those blocks, if we hit a zombie pigman, the other ones will update and come towards us where we can kill them. That is the idea of how this farm is going to work. I hope that made sense. Uh, now the difficult part will be to connect these up because we need to make a giant circle, right? So we have one, two, three, four here, then we have two here, and two here, and then again two here, and then we go one, one, and one, then we repeat that on the other side, one, two, three, four, two here, two here, two here, and then one, 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 and connect it up, and there we go. Our blueprint is done, and it looks awesome. <laughs> you can't really see the whole thing because the nether just can't render it in because of the fog, but this place, it's pretty big. By the way, if you're wondering why we're using magma blocks, it's because piglins are fire-resistant enemies and they can spawn on it, while normal piglins and stuff like that cannot, so it's very useful. But we're out of magma blocks and I'm out of time, so that is where we're wrapping up today's episode. Had a lot of fun making this one, to be honest. We did a bunch of interesting projects today and it was a lot of fun figuring all of the redstone stuff for EFO there and also trying to design my very own gold farm. I wasn't looking at any tutorial by the way, I was just going off of my knowledge and yeah, of the experience that I had because I did build one a long time ago at this point, <laughs> but I did. So yeah, that knowledge did come in useful then. There we go, they just restocked so I can trade again. I'm just getting XP for the shovel that I need so much and hopefully that gold farm that we're building there is also going to provide XP because yeah this is I mean this is okay I guess okay amounts of XP but it's gonna be way better once we actually get that thing finished is this gonna get me to 30? <laughs> not even close okay let's test our luck here Efficiency 4, that's pretty good. Oh, snap. <laughs> really? Ah, whatever, we should have some spare books here. I am out of level, so I can't slap Unbreaking 3 on it. However, I can slap this on it. There we go. And we should be able to rename it somehow. For 60. <laughs> what? Si 60 <laughs> Okay, it's, it's, it's gonna stay like this for a while. But yeah, that is the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.